What's up creatives? Welcome to the Tiffy Show. Today I'm giving you a travel guide on Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, 2019, everything that you need to do and eat. So let's get to it. If you haven't, make sure that you turn on notifications so that you know when I post a video. So why did I take a trip to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico? Well, it was a decision between Cancun, Cabo, and Puerto Vallarta. And I didn't know much about PV as the locals like to call it, but I was in intrigued because it seemed less touristy than the other two and had a good mix of modern and authentic, which I love. We wanted a quick trip to utilize the most of our time, which was about a week. And so ultimately Puerto Vallarta won because I'm an overanalyzer and I looked at beaches and I looked at websites and I looked at pictures and I just thought it looked really, really cool and it almost had a European Portugal feel. So I was like, okay, let's check this place out. We have a lot of time to check out other places and let's see what it's all about. And let me just tell you folks, I loved it. I loved everything about it. As soon as we got off the plane, it was just a really cool feeling. And a fun fact is this is a place, as our taxi driver let us know, that most of the Mexicans go to. So Mexicans go here when they want a vacation. So yes, you get tourists, but you're getting tourists from Mexico, which is already awesome and authentic in itself. Where to stay in Puerto Vallarta? So again, overanalyzed it. There's all-inclusive resorts that you can stay in, Airbnbs, boutique hotels, motels, hostels, you name it, they have it. And the reason that we ultimately did not pick an all-inclusive resort is because we're greedy. We like to get our eat on. There's too much delicious food around the area to feel obligated to eat only at the hotel. Now the hotel that we chose was the Villa Premier, which actually has an all-inclusive option if you'd like that. It's a bit of a smaller hotel, boutique size, and as soon as we walked in, we were greeted with champagne and massages, and that is how I want to be greeted every time I go into a place. But it was a great size, and my favorite part of the whole hotel was it was adults only. Now, I don't mind your kids, I don't mind kids, but I don't have any yet. So I'd like to hold on for as long as I can to the fact that I can still go places and hang out where there are no kids. And this was adults only, so it was really nice to hang out by the pool, have a good time, and just relax. I just wanted to go on camera to say I'm about to meet my boyfriend in backgammon. So this is my proof. I'm gonna do it, right? Am I gonna beat you in backgammon? No. Put some money on me. All right. Put some pesos on 100, it. 100, 100 pesos. That I don't beat you. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yes, you did. A loser bit? Dips are for winners. We're going to play again. He laughed yesterday. He won and he didn't want to play again. Double or nothing. But today he wants to play again. Double or nothing. What is it? Double or nothing. Okay. When you visit, you're gonna wanna stay in El Centro. I stayed um, on 5 de Diciembre, which is where my hotel was, and that is in El Centro, and that is walking distance to the Malecon, which is the boardwalk that you're gonna wanna visit and walk through. That's where you're right next to the beach, and there's artists and a whole bunch of cool things that happen on that boardwalk. And also, if you're not staying in that area, like El Centro area, you're gonna wanna stay in the Zona Romantica. And that is because that is the other pop-in spot. Anything too north or too south of these two areas, it's gonna be very hard to walk places. You're gonna have to get taxis for everything. And I'm a walker when I'm on vacation. I like to stay in places where I can walk out of the hotel, walk to a restaurant, walk to a coffee shop, and just get my needs met. You know what I'm saying? I love the food here. It was delicious. I am so glad that I walked off the beaten path and had delicious bites. The most expensive restaurants you'll get while in PV are going to be on the Malecon. If you just walk up from the Malecon, like a few blocks, maybe even one block, you're gonna get the affordable, delicious, where the locals eat food. So one of the restaurants we went to is Gabby's, which is above a bit and you get a, gr a little view of the ocean. Like you, there's a special seat. If you go to Gabby's, ask for that seat if it's two of you. Um, there's also another area that can get the ocean, but if it's usually like private events or whatever, but just ask and they'll seat you where you can see the ocean and it's great for sunset. So go a little bit before. And then also on a building, they play old movies and it's just a really cool experience. I will say this was our most expensive meal our whole trip and I just wanna say that. Our meal altogether was $45 USD and that included appetizers, 
um, his dinner, my dinner, I think I got fajitas, which you know fajitas are always expensive. Um, the passion fruit margarita, the beer, it included a lot of food, but it was the most expensive meal on our trip, but it's great if you want one fancy like dinner date kind of meal um, to get you started. So, I mean, I just went the highest I could go. So everything now is gonna be like, yay! I got a main, no I didn't, I got a passion fruit margarita and he what you got, you know what? I was gonna say mango margarita, but I got passion fruit margarita yeah. with their like house made tequila. And he got... Kayako. And it's like what? what local it? lager. It's a local it's like lager. lager beer. It has a really cool label. Mm -hmm. And we're about to eat. Mariscos El Guero. I went here twice. This food was so delicious. I don't know what they put in the sauce, but they just had amazing food. And we also became, cause we went twice, we loved it. We became friends with the waitress. She was so sweet and nice. And then we came back cause they're only open certain days. So you might want to check their Yelp before you go. And you are going to see locals at this spot and you're going to feel like I found it. Like I'm in the local spot right here. And it's, you're going to, you're going to ball out on food. When you go to Marisco El Guero, I recommend the ceviche, the stuffed Maryland taco, the shrimp quesadilla, the fish tacos, and the shrimp tacos. And do not forget to try all the sauces because they will be on the table. We ordered a lot of food, as you can see, both visits, and we never paid over $20 USD each time we went. All right, one morning we woke up and we had had a lot of drinks, food, and we just wanted something healthy to start our day because we had a lot planned. This is vacation, but sometimes you have to listen to your body and your body sometimes like, hey, I need fiber, I need water, I need something. So I found The Green Place, which is a vegetarian restaurant. It felt very good to eat something that was fresh and wasn't fried specifically and was just good for our bodies and like gave us the energy that we needed to go throughout our day. We got two coffees, overnight oats, peanut butter toast, a smoothie and a wellness shot. And the wellness shot was delicious and very needed. The total cost for our full meal, me and my boyfriend, was $15 USD. And like I said, the $15 in LA would have covered that one or two lattes that we got, but it covered the whole meal. We walked one night in Zona Romantica, which was pretty far walk from our hotel, but we wanted to check it out and it was so cute. We stumbled upon a restaurant called Basilio, which was gourmet pizza, cute brick interior, and our waiter Nico was awesome. Again, the people here are so friendly. They're so open to help you with your Spanish. And he was so nice and accommodating. We got pizza and drinks. I got the half and half of two of the most popular pizzas, which are the Basilio and the Vallarta. The cost for dinner for both of us was $25 USD. For coffee, I went to this place twice. It was called La Bodoguita del Cafe. It's down here and it was delicious. It had a home, homey feel and they make their own coffee. They had lattes and hot chocolates on the wall. They make their own agave and vanilla extract. And believe me, if I could have taken a bottle, I was on a carry on, I would have taken some home. It was definitely my favorite little coffee shop and I got their Mocha Blanco Latte two days in a row. It's one of the best lattes I've ever had and if I go back, I'm definitely getting it again because they take their time to create a delectable cup of coffee and it was a satisfying treat. We found a churro cafe. I was so excited. It's called La Romantica and I got all the churros all the dipping sauces and a churro ice cream sandwich. I was like, if I'm gonna go hard, I'm gonna go hard. The cost for all the churros and the ice cream churro sandwich and all the dipping sauces was $7. Things to do in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, I definitely recommend walking down the Malecon as much as you can because this will give you direct access to some of the most popular places. Make sure that you visit the Church of Our Lady Guadalupe, which is a historical spot there. And it's basically in the center. So it's kind of the town center in front of it. It's really cute. They have a lot of events here and concerts. And it's a great Instagram photo op, if I don't say so myself. Now, I, on the trip, had heard about Calamitos Beach. And it is a private, like, local beach. And I was ready to get my hike on. You have to hike to this beach. 
and we had to take a taxi to where the starting point of this hike was located and the taxi cost about $12, which is very cheap considering it was about a 45 minute taxi ride to get to the starting point for Los Colomitos Beach. Now, once we got there, we picked up some food, like local food, there's a stand like right when you come down and you can grab some tacos and burritos and they're delicious. Again, some of the top food that I had during this trip, I don't even think it, it probably cost like five bucks. And we took that food with us on our hike and the hike was it was tiring because it was hot, but it's not an impossible hike. You're going to go through kind of like a neighborhood. You're gonna have a view of the water for a while. You're gonna go up and come down. You might run into some animals. When you get on the beach, this is just a fun tip for you. There are water taxis. The guy on the beach is gonna try to hustle, hustle you and be like, hey, water taxis don't come. But water taxis do come and it costs like $2 for the water taxi to take you back to the main starting point. They can't take you all the way to, you know, Malikon or where you are staying in your hotel, but they can take you to the starting point to get a taxi. And at first we we're like, oh cool, they come every 20 minutes or so. But of course, by the time we wanted to leave, there were no water taxis. I'm a sweaty mess, but what do we have to do right now? Hike back. Did not plan on hiking back. I just had like that one way in my head, and now I know I have to hike all that back. I'm just like... Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> There are a lot of fun places to shop while you're in PV, and I highly suggest if you decide to shop that you again, go away from the touristy spots and you know support the local businesses. I decided to get handmade sandals from here. Gonna write it right there. Uh, and it was a wonderful experience. It is a family owned business and they can make custom shoes for you. They have lots of shoes to choose from. And believe me, these were the most comfortable sandals that I've probably ever had. And I'm so happy that I found them. I made a decision and got shoesies and they're so cute. And he was patient and waited for me to pick them out. Yay! The cost of these shoes was $20 USD, but well worth it, you were getting handmade shoes. And I think it's a great souvenir to take home. When shopping in other countries, I love to visit their malls and see what stores they have, see what goodies I can get that I can't get back at home. So we visited the La Isla Shopping Mall, which is an outdoor mall on the marina side of Puerto Vallarta. And we went inside and visited Pull and Bear, which is a store that they only have in Europe. And they have a location in Mexico, which is the one we visited. And it was so fun to shop and buy things, again, that they don't have here in the US because I'm bougie. And I like to tell people, oh, where'd I get this? I got this in Mexico. Oh, where'd you get that? Oh, handmade in Mexico. So that is where we did most of our shopping. That's it. That's my travel guide for Puerto Vallarta, Mexico 2019. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share, like, subscribe, and comment. Comment below and let me know if you've ever been to Mexico and where. And I will see you next time. Stay creative.